Hello there. My name is Tyler Epping, Pop Doc Evangelist here at E1 Solutions. I'm excited for you to join me as I dive in and demo Pop Doc for D365 Finance and Operations. Here at E1 Solutions, uh, we provide an application data management platform that is much more than an iPass. Our two sister products, Smart Connect and PopDoc, tackle all the integration, migration, and reporting challenges in this modern age where companies deploy and rely on an abundance of applications to operate their business. The increase in business automation and workflow from these applications also come with their pitfalls, as these applications do not speak to each other, which makes getting the data to the people who need it to do their jobs an extremely complicated task. Today I'll be focusing on how PopDoc tackles that problem, but on the other side of the coin is Smart Connect, our traditional integration or iPaaS solution that moves data between a source and a destination. I would highly encourage you to connect with our team to explore how Smart Connect can be used in conjunction with PopDoc to handle all your traditional integration needs within D365 finance and operations. So what is PopDoc? At its core, PopDoc is an extremely powerful query engine that asks you as a user a couple of questions. First, what data do you need to see and where does that data exist? And then second, where do you want to see that data? Our process is simple. Inside of PopDoc, you set up a connector for any application that you want to grab data from. Each connector comes with some predefined lists in addition to the ability to generate entirely new lists, combining data from multiple sources or applications. With a list selected, you then determine where you want that list displayed. Our PopDoc web application provides an interface where you can access any list or we use widgets to embed that list inside of the application that you spend your day in. Keep an eye out for the features listed here as each one will be on display throughout the demonstration. But without further ado, let's get started. Jumping inside of FNO, you can see right on our dashboard here, we have a PopDoc tile. Um, and what I'm about to show you is a couple of different lists uh, where we're actually grabbing data from a couple of different environments. Uh, some of that data is going to be coming from this live FNO system, such as this list that I'm showing you here. But I'm also going to show you some examples of data coming from some other systems as well. Uh, the big thing that I want to highlight, it doesn't matter where the data is coming from. Anytime that we're displaying a list via PopDoc, the experience that you as a user are going to be able to have in terms of working with your data is going to be the exact same. Our goal here is that we know that you put data into these applications and we want to help you not only get that data out, but then also be able to work with that data as it applies to your role. Starting with this first list, this is just a purchase orders list coming from this live FNO system. And I want to highlight the functionality that's built into this interface uh, that allows you to really work with the data. So things that you can do as a user very easily, add additional columns to your list, simply select which columns you want to add, PopDoc will go requery and grab those additional fields. You can remove columns just as easily. Uh, simply select which ones you no longer want in your list. Uh, you'll notice they drop in real time. Uh, if I hit refresh, it's just going to take advantage of the full screen. Uh, you have the ability to rearrange the order of these fields. Let's say you want a delivery date at the front of your list. It's a simple drag and drop. Uh, we can also do things like grouping. So maybe I wanted to group by all of my vendors. As you can see, uh, there's an individual group for each of my vendors. If I click the arrow next to any of the vendors, it'll drill down and show me uh, the associated purchase orders. I can take that a step further um, and I can maybe subgroup as well. So now I'm, I'm grouping uh, by my vendors and then I have subgroups uh, based off the purchase order status just to see the associated records uh, for each of those statuses. Filtering. Uh, we give you the ability to have an unlimited number of filters with PopDoc. You can hit that plus button as many times as you want. Uh, you can do things like mix your ands with your ors. So just a lot of opportunity to really ask questions of your data. Uh, now, oftentimes with a filter, you might be working with some sort of date field. Uh, you'll notice that we give you a lot of operators to work with out of the box. So maybe you're using this between with a date field, trying to filter your list on some sort of date range. You can certainly define that date range, but we also have these built-in compare fields. These are just relative date filters all off the current date. Uh, so maybe you want to simplify your search and just filter on last week's transactions or last month's transactions transactions. You don't necessarily have to define that date range every single time. 
Um, now, once you've applied filters, uh, it'll then refresh the list with your filters apply. You then have the ability to favorite this list. Uh, favoriting is going to save any filters that you've added. It'll save any columns that you've brought in or maybe removed so that you can go back and access this list at any time. You don't necessarily have to recreate it if you want to use this list quite frequently. We also have a multi-company drop-down menu built in here. Uh, so if you have multiple companies in, in within your F&O environment, very easy process to bring additional companies in. Uh, simply select which ones you want to add, and what will happen is a new company field gets added, I and mean, it's just telling us where these orders are coming from or what company these orders are coming from. You'll notice that this whole first page is all showing uh, data coming from my U.S. company. But if I expand this out a little further, you'll notice that that changes. So I'll go over a couple hundred records and you can see my company changes. So very easy to make any of these lists multi-company if you are working with multiple companies within your F&O environment. The last thing I just want to highlight on this page uh, is what we call details. Uh, details allow us to show related information. So I have one example of that on this list. You'll notice at the bottom here I have this lines caret. If I click on that and select one of these records, it's now going to show me the lines that are associated with this purchase order. Now this example is showing related information coming from the same system. So again, purchase orders coming from F&O and the lines that are associated with that purchase order. But details aren't limited to just connecting data from the same system. We can also uh, show related information from disparate systems as well. So I'm going to jump over to another list that I have in here, the customers list. This list is showing me all of my customers inside of FNO. So again, this is FNO data. Now you'll notice I have a couple of other details around the outside of this list. This first one, invoices. Uh, if I select one of my customers, you'll notice that I am now showing the invoices that are associated with this customer account. But on the side here, I have another one, opportunities. This opportunities one is actually coming from a CRM system. So I'm showing opportunities that are associated with this customer. So anytime that there's some sort of relationship within the data, whether that's data from the same system or disparate systems, we can connect that data, display it all within one interface so that you as a user don't have to jump to multiple applications to get the data that you need. Now let's take a look at a couple of other examples of lists here that we've embedded or displayed inside of FNO. The first two examples I've shown have been FNO lists that are showing FNO data. But with PopDoc, we can start displaying data and lists from other systems as well. So I'm going to click on this down menu um, and select my D365 sales group. I and mean, let's select our opportunities list. So this list here is coming from an entirely different system, but we're displaying it inside of FNO. Uh, this is an opportunities list coming from D365 sales. And it doesn't matter where we're querying this data from, we're still displaying it with in our PopDoc interface. So the experience that you as a user are going to have with working with this data is the exact same. You can add columns to this list. You can filter on it. You can move around the, the fields. It's the same exact process and the same exact interface uh, no matter where this data is coming from. Another common scenario that PopDoc provides an excellent tool set for is regarding historical data. Uh, we see a lot of people migrating to FNO from an on-premise ERP. PopDoc provides the ability to access any historical data from that on-premise ERP uh, directly in FNO. So I'll show you another example of a list that we have here. Um, you can see, first of all, that I have a couple of custom groups, migration focus groups, where we've moved uh, Dynamics G. EP, Dynamics Nav, and Dynamics SL data. Um, in this case, we archive that data into a data lake and are presenting it directly in FNO. Um, but I'm going to show you an example of a list where we're actually showing historical data, in this case coming from a, a Dynamics GP environment, and we've actually merged that data alongside live FNO data. Uh, so there's a couple of things to point out when we talk about historical data. If you just want to see your standalone history in FNO, that's something we can certainly do. Uh, but this has taken it a step further and has really given you a life-to-date view of whatever list that you are displaying. Uh, so in this example, I've merged together two lists via PopDoc, and I'm actually presenting it directly in 
our FNO environment. The first list is the sales line items list coming from a Dynamics GP environment. I mean, I've merged it alongside the sales lines list here for this FNO environment. Um, you'll notice when we do that, we have a source connector column, and it's just basically telling us where these records are coming from. This whole first page uh, is coming from live uh, FNO data, uh, but if I expand this out and pull in some additional records, You'll notice that the source connector column will eventually change. So um, if I go to the very end of my list now, uh, you'll notice that I have uh, Dynamics GP data that in this case we archive to an Azure data lake, but I'm able to present that all within the same list alongside live FNO data. The last list that I want to quickly highlight uh, that we've embedded or displayed inside of FNO here uh, is what we call a matrix report in PopDoc. Um, now, a matrix report is a custom list option uh, that you can build within PopDoc. Um, in this case, I am building it off of a sales list coming from this live FNO system. But a matrix report allows you to do a little bit more analysis on your data by summarizing the data in columns that relate to the rows. So in this case, I have a month monthly sales by item list and I've basically broken out a date field over the course of a year into 12 different buckets, one for each month. And I'm showing a summarized view of sales by item for each of those months over the course of the year. So you can see it's all broken out. At the very end, I have a total for each item as well. These matrix reports are really great uh, for more analysis type comparisons. So things like month to date or year to date or year over year, where you need to have multiple layers of filtering within your data. I want to flip the script a little bit. Everything I've shown thus far is taking data, whether that be FNO data or data from some other applications and displaying it directly inside of FNO. Let's change that up and let's show a couple of examples of sharing FNO data in other external applications. Uh, the first example I have of that uh, is Salesforce. Um, you'll notice within this uh, Salesforce environment, I have this sales orders FNO tab that we have created uh, right on an account inside of Salesforce. Uh, and if I click on that, um, what I have here is another pop doc list. In this case, it's pulling the sales orders entity coming from my FNO environment, and I'm displaying it directly inside of Salesforce. Uh, now, a couple of cool things to point out about this list. One of them, um, you'll notice that it's contextual. Uh, all of the orders here uh, that are being displayed are for this customer. We've basically placed a filter on this when we're displaying this widget so that it's only showing us records uh, or orders that are associated with with whatever customer that we're on. If we were to jump over to any other account inside of Salesforce, they'd still have this same tab available, but again, only showing records for whatever customer or, or account is being displayed. Uh, the second thing is you'll notice that the theme of our pop doc list has changed. Anytime that we display a pop doc list in an environment, we try to make it feel like it's not some foreign application, but it actually feels native to that system. So you'll notice that the theme that we've placed here is more of a Salesforce theme, whereas the one that we had in FNO was more of a uh, themed for finance and operations. Now, uh, in terms of this interface, this is a pop doc list. So if you recall what I told uh, at the very start of this, is that anytime that we display a pop doc list, no matter where we're displaying it, the experience in terms of what users can do with the data is going to be the exact same. So you'll notice that they can add columns. Um, I've already selected all the columns in this case, but they can filter. They can rearrange the order of the fields. Uh, that same flexibility that I showed you in FNO, uh, users can have that same experience right inside of Salesforce. Now, this is a pretty cool use case because you probably have a sales team that you know, needs to utilize FNO data, but you don't want them inside of FNO. This is a great way where we can take that data that that they need display it right inside of the system that they spend their time in so that they can access it and, and maintain their business without having to ever go inside of FNO. So I'm going to take this one step further and, and show a little bit more of a generic example. But here's one where we've actually embedded uh, project data uh, or project entities showing active projects from an FNO environment. And we're, we've embedded it inside of a Teams channel. Uh, so if you have people that are working inside of Teams uh, or SharePoint, more common applications that would benefit from being able to see some FNO data, uh, this is another 
prime example of a place that we can bring that data right to them inside of the application they're working with. Uh, and again, uh, whether we're in Teams, Salesforce, or FNO, the experience in terms of what users can do with the data is going to be the exact same. Now coming in for a landing here, uh, I want to spend the last uh, handful of minutes focusing on our PopDoc web application. So our PopDoc web application is where we go to set up connectors so that we can query data from different applications. Um, it's also uh, where we go to create widgets so that we can then display that data inside of other applications as well. The first thing that I'll point out within this interface is uh, inside of the web application, we also have another interface where you can access any list that's available to you. So right now you can see I'm, I'm pulling a finance and operations uh, sales orders list that um, similar to what I had shown you inside of Salesforce. But you'll notice that this interface presented shows the exact same experience that we've seen in every single one of the applications that we've seen so far. Uh, and that users have the ability to really work with the data uh, and this is a great interface for people that also don't work out of an application, um, uh, another place that they can go if they would benefit from being able to see uh, data from FNO or really any data from uh, your other systems as well. Uh, but I'm actually going to jump inside of our connectors. The first thing that I'll point out, we have about 45 pre-built connectors that are available to you out of the box. We've talked about D365 FNO here today. I've showed a list from Dynamics uh, 365 Sales. Talked about Azure Data Lakes uh, with regards to historical data. Uh, you can see that we cover kind of the whole Microsoft stack, uh, but we also can connect to applications outside of just the Microsoft stack and outside of just ERP systems. Systems. So CRM systems, help desk solutions, marketing automation systems. Um, I do like to point out that we also have this generic REST service connector. Uh, if you do have applications that you use that we don't have a pre-built connector for that has uh, an API or a REST API, uh, we potentially have the ability to connect to that as a data source as well using our generic REST connector. But this just kind of shows kind of the wide range of applications that we can connect to and that you can access data from. Um, I'm going to go into my uh, FNO connector specifically, however. And really, anytime that we're querying data from a system, we're setting up a connector inside a PopDoc, everything inside of one of these connectors is entirely customizable to the users or the customers. The other thing I like to point out inside of here is it's really easy to use inside of one of these connectors. You're really ever working with fields that have a cursor over them or drop down menus. Now, within every single one of these connectors, the settings menu uh, is going to be relatively the same. Uh, there will always be a list section. And you can see that I have a handful of lists in my FNO connector. Uh, these are the FNO entities that I pulled in initially. Um, you have the ability to drill into any of these entities if you want to make uh, adjustments, assign them to a group. Maybe you want to change the name of the entity. Uh, maybe you want to change the name of the fields or the field types or add calculated fields. You have that full flexibility in doing that inside of any of your, your lists or entities. Uh, this is also where you would go to add any custom details uh, to show related information as well. Now, these aren't all the entities you can bring in. As you can see, I have this add list section. Uh, so any entity that's available inside of your FNO system, uh, you can bring in, in into PopDoc. So right now, um, I've clicked that add list. Uh, and now it's displaying all the remaining entities that are inside of my FNO environment. And if I wanted to bring any of these entities into uh, my PopDoc application, it would just be a matter of clicking the checkbox, hitting add, uh, and then those new lists would populate. This is uh, one other section I like to point out, the custom list section. So I showed you two examples of a custom list here today. Uh, we showed you that matrix report, which is more of that analysis type report um, that you can do uh, with your data. I have also showed um, a merge list where we merge together GP and FNO sales data. Uh, you'll notice here uh, we have a couple of different custom list types, uh, but this is a great tool to use if you want to start connecting data from disparate systems in more of like a virtual SQL type sense. Just to show you what it looks like when you're doing a merge list, for instance, it's a really easy experience where you're just giving your list a name. You're then selecting what two parent lists you want to merge together. So you can see that I select my sales line items list uh, from my Azure data link and the sales order lines list coming from my uh, finance and operation system. The next step would be just selecting your fields. Uh, so what field from each of the parent list do you want to merge together into your new list.
after going through this mapping exercise, this list is now available for use. So how do we access it? Well, one, you could add a new tab within the PopDoc web application here and access the list via the interface uh, available inside of the web application. Uh, but what we've primarily focused on here today is displaying data inside of the applications that you spend your time in. So we show data inside of FNO, inside of Salesforce, inside of Microsoft Teams. Whenever we are displaying data inside of an external solution, we are creating a widget in PopDoc. So let's come in for a landing here and spend a couple of moments inside of the developer section of PopDoc, which as you can see is where we go to create widgets. Uh, now I showed you a couple of different widgets here today. Uh, the one inside of FNO is what we call a multiple list widgets. And as the name suggests and what you might have noticed, uh, it contained multiple lists and lists coming not only from that FNO uh, environment, but also data and lists coming from other applications as well. If we want to add a new list to this widget it would just be a matter of hitting this edit icon uh, and selecting which list we want to add from there once we've added it it would then be available inside of our FNO environment next time we accessed that multiple list widget now I want to focus on the widget that we actually embedded inside of Salesforce uh, just to show you what that experience looks like whenever we want to create a new widget so you'll notice uh, when we access this widget, the first page is just giving your widget a name, selecting the type. Um, in the case of the Salesforce widget, we had a single list widget, and then selecting what list from what connector you want displayed. Uh, you then have the ability to select what fields you want to display and whenever that widget populates. The parameters section. Uh, this is where we are passing that parameter through so that our list is filtered and only showing us records that are associated with, in this case, the account that we're on. You also notice that we can select, in the case of Salesforce, uh, which environment we plan on uh, embedding this widget to. Now, we also have the ability to decide what functionality we want to provide uh, for anybody that's accessing this widget inside of Salesforce. So for instance, if you don't want your users to be able to export the list to Excel, uh, simply uncheck that option. Uh, maybe you don't want them to have the ability to add additional fields. Uh, you have the option of unselecting the ability to show columns. Uh, so this is just one layer of security that we can provide provide whenever we are displaying data inside of another application. We also have another security model within PopDoc that I won't dive into here today, but allows you to decide who can see what and what permissions they have, whether they're in an external application or inside of our PopDoc web application. There's one more feature inside of the developer section of PopDoc that I want to quickly highlight, and that feature is called Jobs. Jobs allow you to schedule a list or report to be emailed to you or your team at a specific day or time. So maybe you have some month-end reports that you want to deliver to part of your team on a specific day of the month. Uh, you can certainly accomplish that with Jobs. Or maybe you want to send a list of yesterday's sales transactions to your executive team every morning, another great candidate for the job job section of PopDoc. But anytime you want to schedule lists to be delivered, PopDoc jobs is something that you can use to accomplish that task. Now we have discussed a handful of ways that PopDoc can effectively provide access to your data within D365, finance and operations, as well as share your FNO data inside other external applications. With that said, we would be more than happy to discuss additional use cases as it pertains to your systems. If you'd like to chat or have unanswered questions, contact us at sales at e1solutions.com and we'd be happy to help. For now, from the E1 Solutions team, Thanks for tuning in.